You know, everyone, last night was Bound for Glory. And from what I have seen, courtesy of downloading the, the show through a torrent after accidentally downloading the Spanish version, I finally got one that was in English. Um, no offense. But anyway, what I saw, I, from what I read and saw, it looks like TNA, booking-wise, made some good decisions. Mostly what you got, with the exception of Gayle Kim, mostly what you got was a lot of TNA originals, if you will, winning championships last night. You had Saban kicking off the show, winning the X Division title for the seventh time. You had, whether you like them or not, you had the Brosmans, Jesse Got Goddard's, and Robbie E becoming the tag champs. You had, and then at the end, you had AJ become the world champ. Hope they don't screw that up. So those were good booking decisions. I think someone backstage, whoever's in charge of creative or booking, is realizing they made big mistakes and that they should have not missed what, ma what made TNA great or at least made it a good alternative. But even though the booking, some of the booking decisions were good and some of the nice returns like Abyss, you know, was good to see, which I'm pretty sure is going to lead to him renewing his rivalry with Bully Ray down the line. To me, I have to say, even though I haven't watched it all, I'm uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it onto a DVD, a uh, ROM, and then put it into my Xbox 360 and then connect my Xbox 360 to my DVD recorder and then record it onto DVD. Um, I have to say from what I've read and seen, I have to say it was all right. I mean, it wasn't anything spectacular, but it was all right. You know, a lot of people say some of the outcomes didn't, you know, come didn't go the way they should have, even though the match quality was good, the outcomes were, you know, minim well bare minimal, if not disappointing. And that's okay. That's all right. Um, but anyway, that's not, that's not the only thing I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is what you're seeing in front of you. This picture here was uploaded onto Facebook last night by a fan who was in attendance. And this fan noticed that one, this whole section of the Viaz Arena, the Cox Arena in San Diego, wasn't even t tapered off, wasn't topped off, tarped off, if you wasn't tapered off. This whole section was just uh, exposed. It was just exposed. It was. And I think, I don't, I don't think any of it was shown on television that much, maybe tiny bits here and there, but that was exposed. And that's not a good sign when at just supposed supposedly biggest show of the year, which is your Super Bowl, your WrestleMania, your Star Arcade, your World Series, your NBA Finals for your company. That's not a good sign when half of the arena is not, half of the arena barely has anybody in those seats. When half of the arena is completely empty and maybe you see one or two or three people in the seats there and that's it. I mean, I mean honestly, what is TNA thinking? And, but you, you want to know what really got me? I watched the countdown show. I watched the pre-show yesterday. And when they did the gauntlet match, there were seats right in front of the camera, right? You know, camera front, right in front of the camera. There were seats that were still unoccupied that as we got closer to the pay-per-view being officially begin, as we got closer to the pay-per-view officially beginning, yeah, they got occupied by people that bought the seats. But when I saw those empty seats, especially for a tag team gauntlet, and we were like, what, 25, 20 minutes away from the beginning of the pay-per-view, that's not a good sign. And then when you angle wide camera out during one of the matches, I think, I don't know if it, I think the world title match or the ultimate X match or, or maybe Abyss's return, I don't, I don't remember. It's one of those uh, situations last night. When you wide angle out, and you see in your front row, your ringside seats, a couple of empty seats in the first and second row, that's not a good sign either. Now, I can't say if those people probably went to the bathroom or not, but that's not a good sign. It isn't. I 
And, you know, in fact, Bully Ray said it best on a on a, on the Busted Open show, po- Busted Open podcast. He said it best. He said basically that yeah, it kind of discourages them, but at least. But the balance is what you get from emptiness, from the empty seats of the not so filled up arenas or venues, you get back in quality in the ring. And I agree, I, I agree. I mean, I'll be honest with you. When I lived in Lawrence, Kansas, I used to attend as much as I could every CSW event, Central States Wrestling event at the Lawrence Armory. And I would attend them also sometimes when they would come to the community building. And the biggest crowd so far that I saw that that Central States Wrestling got was when AJ Styles showed up. That's right, AJ Styles. And I had the opportunity to meet AJ. I'm not lying, folks. I had the opportunity to meet him. I did. I had the opportunity to meet AJ Styles. I talked to him. He even called me the man with a thousand questions. The man of a thousand questions. Oh, the man with a thousand questions. That's what he called me. I, I, I swear. But anyway, that place was packed. You're talking almost according to what I understood. About 300 people were in that Central States, was in that Lawrence Armory for Central States Wrestling and for AJ Styles' CSW debut. That's saying something. That is saying something. Decent size. I mean, that's the biggest crowd I think they said they've ever had. Even when they got Raven there, they didn't have that big of a crowd. So, for me, to see something like that for TNA and know that half of that arena, which seats about 12,000 people, 12,200 people, half of it gone. I mean, yeah, pretty much it says that, you know, maybe they got about 10,000 in there. Maybe they got 6,000, I mean, 600, 800. But still, that's not a good sign. And especially, like I said, during the countdown pre-show, during the gauntlet match, which is 20 f- taking place 20, 20 to 25 minutes before your pay-per-view, and you don't, and you see some unoccupied seats, and then later on in the pay-per-view, you take out and do some wide-angle camera, wide camera angles, and you see some empty seats in the front and second ringside rows. That's not a good sign, TNA. That's not a good sign. I mean, you may have had a fair, a, an okay show last night, an okay Bound for Glory. But honestly, TNA needs to start thinking better. They need to start. They need to start going with a bit better business strategy than what they've got right now. And apparently, this might be the last time we see something like that for quite some time. Not saying we won't see it this Thursday when they go to Salt Lake, depending on the venue. Matter of fact, let me look that up. Matter of fact, let me look that up. Um, but again, you know, here you go. I'm trying to see exactly where they where they're going to be. The Maverick Center. The Maverick Center. It'll be at the Maverick Center this Thursday. what this looks like. If it's what I think it is, again, not a good move. Let 
the Maverick Center, originally known. Yep, it's the E Center. The E Center, which used to ho which hosted some WWE events, WCW events. Capacity is about twelve thousand six hundred people. TNA's going there. Nice. It says a 10,100 seat multi-purpose arena, which can hold up to about 12,600 for wrestling. I mean, is TNA serious about this? Obviously they are. So this might be the last time. I mean, you see it. In fact, the first event there was WCW Monday Nitro Live. Live on September 22nd, 1997. So, yeah, they're going to what was formerly known as the E Center in Salt Lake City, or at least in West Valley City, Utah. Again, I know they're booked for this, but unless they get a decent crowd now with AJ being champion, I I just don't see I I just don't see Impact Wrestling doing these kind of venues anymore. I mean, the best business strategy for them is to go to smaller venues. And I mean smaller, the ones they know they could sell out. The ones they know they could sell out. Heck, you want to know one that they could sell out here on the West Coast, or at least the Southwest Coast? You know which, what they could s which one? Tucson, Arizona, Tucson Convention Center. They can sell that place out no time flat if they advertise good. Because that's the perfect size venue for them. But this, this is not good business strategy. Because if you can't even get a full arena, a decent sized arena of 10,000, maybe 900 people in your, in San Diego for your biggest event of the year, how do you expect them to come and fill up the, formerly the, the Maverick Center, formerly the E Center? How do you expect them to fill up the Maverick Center in Salt Lake City or West Valley C City, Utah, for your show, for your weekly show, especially sit there for four hours. How do you expect that? You don't. Again, this is this is basically all due to the fact that TNA ever since, and I'm I'm not trying to blame, not trying to say this is entirely Hogan and Bischoff's fault, but they didn't really contribute much with their influence. But to me, I just, you don't, me you don't hurt something that works. You don't, wh what is the old saying? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You don't mess with something that's not broke. You don't mess with something that's not broke. You don't. The best business strategy for them, for TNA, from a reality point, from a realistic standpoint, from a realistic standpoint, the best strategy for them, best strategy for them, if you will. The best strategy for them is to do the smaller venues, to do things like the convention center in Arizona, to do memories, to do the high schools, to do the co colleges. Heck, you want the truth. He, here's fact. They had a decent sized crowd the weekend that Macho Man Randy Savage passed away. They had a decent sized crowd in a high school gymnasium or community college gymnasium. They need to strategize and start using those kind of places. They need to. 
I'm looking at the map right now. I'm looking at the map right now. And get this, folks. Get this. You have floor seating. If you live in Salt Lake and you've probably been to this place, here's the sections that are available. For those of you that may know about this arena and have been there. S hold on for a second. I had to, that was my mom calling, checking in on things. But anyway, for some of you that live in the Salt Lake City area and have been to this arena, here are the sections that are for sale or basically have seats available. Here's the sections. Section, basically it's section 119 to 126. And on floor seating you have the knockout zone. You have section double A, double B, double C, double D, double E, and double G. Those are your sections. So basically, for an arena that has 212 sections, You're not even, 212 sections. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In the upper seating, in the regular seating, it's not the floor seating, but the regular seating. You you basically are getting one, two, three, four, five, six, se seven. Th th this is crazy. You're not even getting a hundred section you're not even getting half of the sections here you're getting less than that it says no seats available in section 101 section 102 nothing <laughs> i mean i mean are, are they serious honestly are they serious so so, so basically you're telling me TNA is only, from what this is saying, and I'll provide a link to it. I'll provide a link to this if I have to. But what TNA is saying here is you're not even, you're only getting, not even half of those sections. You're only getting like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're getting eight. Regular seat, arena seat, you're getting s eight regular arena sections. Add in to the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Your base floor seating, the seven floor, se the seven floor seats, if you will. The seven floor seat, the floor seat, the seven sections and floor seating. 
And you're getting essentially just 15 sections out of an arena that's described to have 212 sections. That, I mean, honestly, is TNA not thinking? And if you want this kind of, if you want, if you think that's going to be, to them, that's going to be a sellout. Me, really want a sellout. Here's what you do. You go to smaller arenas. You go to smaller venues. Like I said, you have to go to the community college or, or a high school gymnasium or whatever that's going to give you decent seating. So be it. It, and if you think that's crazy, the Baltimore thing is canceled. And it's still up here, though. The next impact taping, as far as I know, according to this, is in the Cincinnati Gardens. After Salt Lake, as far as we know. So I know it's at the Cincinnati Gardens. <laughs> Again, this is just this this is not good booking on booking venue wise on on TNA's part. It's not good. Again, it's not good booking. It's not good booking on TNA's part. And this... This is a bigger arena than, than Salt Lake, obviously. And this is going to be on the 7th, from what it's being described, on the 7th. And to me, this is, this is not good booking on TNA's part. It's not. It's not good booking. Not good booking on the part. And let's see how many people things that this is. Okay, capacity. Ten thousand two hundred and eight. Okay, that's all right. That's fine. That's a good size. If it was a pay per view, but I seriously doubt they're gonna get that. If I look at the thing here. And the sections they got available right now. Uh well basically they got all the sections available for this. They got all the sections available. They got all the sections available for Impact Wrestling Live at the Cincinnati Gardens. So they might get a decent crowd there. And from what I'm seeing here on a picture of it, yeah, this might be a more suitable arena for them. But then again, maybe not. But it might be more suitable. You see, if that is, you see, that's the arena to me that they need to start running. It is. I'm being honest with you. It is the that's the those are the kind of arenas. Cincinnati Gardens might be the best suitable to me. If you can book your book your event, your wrestling show, in a ten thousand in a let's put it, let's be honest, a five hundred or six hundred to ten a five hundred to ten thousand seat arena. That's probably the best business decision for TNA because that way they won't be ruined, they won't be hurting. If you know what I mean, they won't be hurting. They won't be embarrassed. You know, I even look.
I even look at Topeka, Kansas at the Expo Center, and I've been in the Expo Center, and it's a little bigger from what they're describing, but it would be a good, se good, a good venue for them, but then again, maybe not. I'm thinking more along the lines, like I said, I'm thinking something along more along the lines because this seats about 10,000 people when it comes to concerts. That's a good size. Expo Center would be the perfect venue as well, even though it might be a little bigger from map-wise, but still it would be a better venue. They would get a decent crowd. So to me, so to me, I think when I look at this, I honestly believe in, as a fan, that TNA's best option, in my opinion, folks, in my opinion, their best option is to go with arenas like the Expo Center in Topeka, Kansas, like Cincinnati Gardens, and even smaller arenas like armories, community colleges, whatever. And if from a business standpoint, going back to places like the Impact Zone, if that's going to help them where they can film maybe four to six weeks, six weeks at the most, which would be, which to me would be the best business strategy, they can at least film six weeks of impact taping there, that'd be great. And to me, that would be a good business decision as well. Do six weeks, and while you're waiting those six weeks, renegotiate for another six weeks and another six weeks, so that way you're not taking over, so that way you're not at the Im impact zone all the time. It's like you're only there for maybe three days, and then the rest of the time for the next six weeks or so, they can do whatever they want with the universe with that section. So to me, the best to me that's a good strategy on I on TNA's part if they're going to go with that. To me, that'd be the best strategy. But alongside that, to me, if you're going to book, if you're going to take Impact on the road for two for two week for a live Impact taping for a live Impact and an Impact and for another Im and for a taping of impact that airs the following week, your best option is to go to the 500 to 10,000 seat arenas, because at least you'll get decent crowds there. You go a little above that, it's not gonna work. Take a look at what they did earlier this year with lockdown. They book the Alamo Dome. And what do they do? They only book one section of it. Yeah, that, that's good business strategy, but how ridiculous does it look when 90% of the arena is topped off, is t tapered off, is blocked off, and you can't even use the ceiling for your lethal lockdown match. Doesn't make sense. But anyway, anyway, I believe W I believe TNA needs to go with the strategy I c I've suggested. Go with the strategy they're going to plan to do hopefully with the impact zone, hopefully for about 6 weeks, continue doing that cuz that'll help them out. As well as, in my opinion, if you're going to book Impact Wrestling on the road for live TV tapings in other venues besides Universal Studios, then my suggestion, the 500 to 10,000 seat arenas, and also that would be my suggestion for your pay-per-views as well. As much as that may, in some, of the, uh, in some people's eyes, that may discredit the value of the pay-per-views, think of it this, what's better? Having a pay-per-view in an arena was not even going to was a, an arena in a fifteen in a twelve thousand to fifteen hundred twenty thousand seat arena, where you only got barely even get like what eight hundred or six hundred people in there, or what you know what's a better business strategy doing that or going to or booking a pay-per-view, you if you will at a five hundred to ten thousand seat arena in, to where at least you'll have a decent sized crowd. To me, 
I go with the 500 to 10,000 seat arena because when I look at something like this, and on the biggest show of the year, which was the which was a pic, when I take a look at this picture that was taken last night at the biggest show of the year, the Super Bowl, their NBA Finals, their World Series, their WrestleMania, their Starcade. When I see that, that's disappointing. And if I'm TNA management, I don't want to see that ever again. So to me, so to me, TNA needs to re rethink the business strategy when it comes to booking venues. Because if they book correctly, it's going to help them financially. They're going to see more value for the buck. And that's all I have to say on it. Let me know what you guys think down below. Comment if you like. I'll talk to you all later. I got to go take care of some stuff right now.